Ted, it's such a pleasure to have you here with us. I know this is your first time to Riyadh yes. and your first time to this conference. Yes. Um, we're so happy to have you here. What feedback do you have about this conference? It's wonderful so far. You know, the, the brain power that's here is incredible. Um, I've spoken with several folks about the, uh, the, the services and applications that you're developing and it's, it's mind blowing. Um, I know here we've been talking about the different areas of uh, cognitive cyber uh, throughout both of the days. Uh, today we started with you, we started with the best on our second day. Um, uh, and your speech was very different because it gave us that whole journey of the evolution of AI and how today we've reached to this point, yeah. um, uh, taking into consideration all these rich examples that you gave us. Uh, but if we want to highlight what, are, what is, what is the, the changing point right now with AI and with cybersecurity given in the past 12 months and with the new evolution that we're experiencing? Well, from, an, from a reactive perspective, from how the, the good guys use AI, I think the, um, uh, with the mass amounts of data that are out there to analyze, whether it be you know, threat intelligence out mm -hmm. in the wild or uh, just massive quantities of data from victim companies, mm -hmm. um, using AI to parse through that data in, uh, in a programmatic um, means to look for what are really the equivalent of a needle in a needle stack. You know, it takes out a lot of the human effort needed to identify key points of evidence. Mm -hmm. I think your speech was one of the more positive speeches that was looking towards uh, a certainly secure future. Mm -hmm. And with AI, it's yeah, the risk is increasing, but our capabilities in terms of our, um, our experts and how we're developing is, is, is also very high and very uh, fast. Yes. Today, who is ahead who? I mean, when it comes to the bad guys and it comes to cybersecurity experts who are yeah. securing the space and making it more you know, safe for everybody else, at this very point, who is ahead who? Well, I, I'm a cynical guy, <laughs> and so I always think the bad guys are ahead. True. But, but like I said in my presentation, it doesn't worry me because of you know being at a conference like this in particular it uh, despite my cynical nature um, seeing all of these individuals here working for the common good you know uh, the the collaborative effort between individuals whether it be you know a, a business in omaha nebraska in the states or here in the kingdom we're both fighting the same cause true and so it's incredible to see this collaborative effort to share what the threat actors are doing and working together to, to eliminate those threats. Um, so I, I think, uh, to answer your question in short, I think threat actors, they're ahead of us, but there's more of us. And, um, and I'm, I'm inclined, maybe it's idealistic, but I'm inclined to believe that the good guys will prevail. True, true. Until they find out, you know, they come up with something new and then the, right. the race starts all over again. 100%, it's, it's a constant game of cat and mouse, which is exciting and fun. But, um, but I still believe in the good guys. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the way we all should think. Yes. Um, ever since you started in the private sector, I'm sure you're looking at different organizations with different concerns and different sizes. Uh, uh, what is right now their concern in terms of receiving the right information, the right level of awareness on how to deal with the current changes and the current threats? It's a great question, especially with regards to the size of the organization. Um, you know, because I, I worked with mom and pop shops as well as, you know, giant corporations and, um, and nation states, you know, but, but the, there's some very um, uh, low cost and easy things that all of these organizations can do. And, you know, the standard things, like have an incident response plan, have an information security program. But more importantly, um, I, I, I've got to use one of my favorite quotes, um, General Eisenhower, you know, before he was president back in the States. He said, um, in, in preparing for battle, I've found that plans are useless, mm -hmm. but planning is indispensable. And regardless of the size of your organization, if you, if you plan, the act of planning um, can put you uh, so far ahead of the threat actors because it'll be you know, muscle memory at that point. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that goes for if you're a you know, Goliath nation state or a mom and pop shop, you know, um, uh, just planning for an attack, having it at the front of your memory I think it's one of the best things that you can do. Regardless of what the situation is, true. 100%. And you, you gave a very interesting quote on, uh, on the stage um, that there are two kinds of organizations, those who have been hacked yes. and those that will be hacked. Correct, yeah. I, I um, again, I'm a very cynical person, but it's, it's true. I mean, the nature of breaches this day, especially after COVID with 
a lot of sure. the workforce being remotely, uh, uh, you know, working in remote locations, working from home, it uh, it changes the the threat landscape quite a bit, and and so. Um, it's much easier for corporations to lose data, whether it's somebody working from home or through uh, sharing data in the cloud. Um, and a lot of this is not, they're not, uh, these breaches are not um, malicious. You know, they're essentially acts of negligence, uh, just with people trying to um, to keep data um, handy and accessible. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. With the new um, evolution of AI, what would you say is the number one opportunity that has arisen due to all these changes and de developments? I mean, we're hearing different things. Yeah. Some people are saying uh, the downside is, is, is more, um, we should be more careful, but I'm sure there, there are so many economic opportunities that have arisen. Um, what would you say is the number one opportunity at this point? I would say the number one opportunity is, um, is again with, with data analytics. You know, um, I'm excited to see where AI goes with massive quantities of data and, and, um, and from disparate sources, you know, mm -hmm. aggregating these disparate sources of data and, um, and programmatically identifying what data you need, whether it's a keyword or whether it's an IP address. Um, I, I'm excited to see how um, AI can expedite analytics for cyber investigations. Ted, this was your first time here in Riyadh and first yes. time here in this conference. Hopefully we'll see you here next year. I'll get the chance to interview you. Perfect. What do you anticipate to see in the next 12 months? Oh, that's a great question. In the next 12 months... And I... then we can meet next year and see if that comes true or not. That's great, so you're going to hold me to this. So in the next 12 months, I think that um, uh, that we... and. And this will be interesting to, to rehash in a year. Hopefully we can talk before then. But if we don't talk until next year, um, it would be interesting to pick up on how threat intelligence has adjusted, or how AI has adjusted the, um, the acquisition of threat intelligence mm -hmm. for the purposes of good. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it be harvesting intel from the open source internet or the dark web, um, that's what I'm most excited about. Um, so so let's, let's see how that works out in 12 let's months. Let's stay hopeful and excited. I'll mark my calendar. Thank you so much, Ted. Great to this meet you. This is amazing. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks for taking the time.